So in this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can take this grass material, which is kind of plain, and make it a little bit more interesting. And we're going to do that by using a material blend. In order to find this material, you first need to go down to your content browser, click on show or hide the source panel, and go up to your main content folder. From here, make sure your landscape is selected. And you should see a landscape material here. We're going to use this one that I created called a landscape blend material, and I've put it all in your content folder. If you don't see it, try going up to filters and choosing material. And make sure again you're in this main content folder, and it should be the third one on the list. Right now, this looks kind of like a mess, an oily mess, and we need to do a couple things to get it to look right, and then you can paint it however you like. We're going to go into our modes and change this to landscape. And we're gonna go up here from sculpt to paint. And you'll see there's three materials here. You need to create a layer info for each one, a weight blended layer, and then just click okay. So hit the plus, weight blended layer, okay, for each one until they all have layer info. From here, I can now start painting if I decide I wanted to add some gravel, perhaps along the shore of the boops, shore of the beach. I could start painting that in. If you want it to blend a little bit, you can get your brush strength down. Get a nice big radius. And if I come in here with some grass now, I can kind of get that to blend just a little bit better. So the two materials will kind of be interacting at the same time. You'll see that there's a little bit of a blend that goes on right along the edges. A third material that I've included is rock. So if you wanted to put some rock in here, kind of paint some rock face a little bit so you can see some of that mountain. You could do that. And maybe the rock will blend a little bit into some gravel. And then maybe you want to just throw some grass on there as well. If you kind of over feel like you overdid it a little bit. And just kind of play around and keep going back and forth. Use a smaller brush as you get into the more detailed sections. Um, right now it doesn't look great. There's still these little lines here on the grid. So when you're feeling like you want to see what it looks like, you're going to want to hit build. And that's going to build and bake in all those materials and lighting for your level. This does potentially take some time, depending on how much uh, stuff is going on in your level. And you can see at the bottom right, it's going to say it's building lighting. And it's going really fast right now, so we'll give it just a little bit longer. And we should be able to see the final result. And there it goes. You might decide that you want to have a path that goes from maybe your architecture to your, I don't know, somewhere else on the level. So I could go to gravel here. I can make my brush really small. Pull the strength up just a bit. Maybe I just want to draw a path to kind of show the player where they should be going. And that's what that would look like when you walk here. So get creative. This is kind of an art at this point, um, how you want to blend your materials and get an opportunity to uh, experiment with that. And if you don't like these three materials and you want to do your own, that's definitely something we can do, but it does take a little bit of process. And I'm going to show you kind of under the hood right now what's going on with this material. So a typical material, 
when we create a material. It's going to have some properties that the most important being color, metalness, and roughness. So I'm going to apply this material right now that I just created to this cube right here. So I'm going to go back into select mode, select this cube, and apply this material to it. And you can see that right now nothing is going on. Oops. So with the material open, let's go ahead and go to base color. And what you're looking for here is a constant 3 vector. This means you have three uh, numbers. That's going to be the red, green, and blue numbers. But if you just double click on it, you can pick whatever color you decide you want. So I like this teal color. I'm going to go with that. And as soon as I hit OK and save, my cube is now going to become that color. If I want to adjust the roughness, I will do a constant, a single number between 1 and 0. 1 being completely rough and 0 being completely shiny. So let's see what that looks like with the point 1 on it, which would be 10% rough. And again, 0 means 100% shiny. It's a little hard to see. I'll put a light next to it so you can see what's going on here. But we have essentially made it kind of plastic looking. It reflects pretty well. If I bring the this down to 0 0.05, you can see it will, when I hit save, start to get shinier. And if I bring it all the way down to 0, that's as sh shiny as an object can get. It's basically a mirror at this point. And it will reflect objects pretty perfectly inside them. The other value though, in order to, if we wanted to um, make some changes to this to make it look more metallic, we could pull our metalness up. So I'll pull a constant out of here. And I'm going to change the value of this to 1, which means this is going to be a fully metallic object. So let's see what that looks like. And now we can see that it reflects the colors around it, and it looks like it's uh, pure metal. Obviously, that's not a very realistic looking thing. So I'm going to pull the metalness down to maybe 0.75. And I'm going to bring the roughness up to about 0.1. And we'll get something that looks metal, but not overly so. Something like that. And you can adjust these parameters. Maybe that's like a car paint or something like that. Um, you adjust these parameters however you like. If you want to change this, you can always decide, oh, you know what? I want the color to be darker. And you can play with those settings as well. So you hit save and then give it a chance to compile, and there it is. There's um, a lot more to materials, but I think as a good starting point, this is uh, just to kind of get your feet wet. I would encourage you to experiment with making some different materials. In order to create one again, you have to right click and make a new material. Now, the reason why it's so hard to create a material blend is what we're doing here is we're taking properties from three different materials the grass, the, the um, gravel and the rock, and we're blending them together into a landscape material. And this is something that you're not going to be um, prepared to understand at this point, but essentially this is all the color information for the grass that allows it to kind of have variety in it, so it's not just the same grass over and over. And when we look at it up close, there's a lot going on with this grass, and uh, it has um, kind of the illusion of these little recesses and these little dark spots in them. And that's done with what's called our normal map, which is down here. But again, we're not quite ready to delve into that, but just understand that um, it is a process. And if you would like a different material, uh, if you can find the material in here, so for example, maybe instead of um, your path being what we had before, you want cobblestone, just let me know and I can come and make that change for you. But it does take a few minutes because I have to open the cobblestone layer and then copy and paste all of these attributes into your material blend layer and uh, plug it into one of these modules right here. That's it for today. Uh, I do want to see you guys painting your landscapes as well as trying to create your own materials.
and have some fun and be creative.